12 News at 10 starts now. And we begin tonight with a record breaking day of heat across Arizona with a chance to break another round of records on Friday. Today, Phoenix hitting 113 degrees, topping a 2016 record by two degrees. An excessive heat warning remaining in effect all across the valley through tomorrow. Get ready for another scorcher. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on 12 News at 10. I'm Jonathan McCall in tonight for Mark. And I'm Kadiva Devine. Let's get right over to your latest forecast as we head closer to the weekend. Meteorologist Lindsay Riley is here with a look at what's in store as we head into tomorrow. Hi, Lindsay. Well, another excessive heat warning for much of the lower deserts in western Arizona tomorrow. It's 10 p.m. and we are still at 100 degrees in Glendale. 99 in Phoenix and 91 up toward Cave Creek. Hour by hour as we go through tonight, temperatures will remain in the 90s through 2 a.m. And even at 5 a.m. tomorrow, we're starting off the day very warm. 84 degrees. Skies will be clear. Sunrise is at 518 tomorrow. And at 6 a.m., it's 86 degrees. By 9 a.m., we're already in the mid 90s. 95, a few scattered clouds wind speeds will be light. Then we're going straight up for the one teens yet again. Second day in a row. Uh, we will likely stay shy of a record here in Phoenix, but elsewhere outside of the valley, we do have some records in jeopardy. Temperatures will finally fall below 110 heading into the weekend. Jonathan. All right, Lindsay, thanks so much. Tonight, a wildfire burning about nine miles west of Flagstaff has forced evacuations at the middle military training site. The Bravo fire sparking at Camp Navajo last night. Since we last saw you on 12 News at 6, we've learned that the flames have now burned through a thousand acres. 12 News journalist Gabriela Baquera in Coconino County with that new update from fire crews. Camp Navajo is closed to all non-essential people and employees out of an abundance of caution. They've also removed what they could, including military units and RV residents. Fire crews from across Arizona are battling a wildfire burning through Camp Navajo, a military training site nine miles west of Flagstaff. Our crews are working as diligently as possible to bring this fire to full containment as quickly as possible while keeping our resources safe. There are no immediate threats to buildings or people, but the Coconino County Sheriff's Office wants nearby communities to be ready to evacuate if the fire shifts quickly. Those neighborhoods include A1 Ranch, Belmont North and South, Village Camp, Songy Bottom Ranch, and homes along Naval Observatory Road. The fire is moving at a moderate rate of intensity through Pine Litter and Ponderosa Pine. It's currently moving in a northeast direction. Crews are fighting the fire by ground and air. Dozers were brought in to cut control lines around the perimeter. It's not acceptable excessively dry. We're not at a extreme drought status like we were several years ago, but we are still in northern Arizona and the weather is still doing northern Arizona things. This wildfire burning as stage one fire restrictions go into effect across the state, including the southern region of Coconino County. People are asked to avoid activities that could start fires, including building a campfire, setting off fireworks or welding. We're not entirely sure why this fire was originated, but having fire restrictions in effect does help because if we can cut down on the number of human starts, that gives us more magnitude for our resources to respond to incidents like this where they're needed. Officials don't plan on closing any roads, but they do expect smoky conditions to linger. They suggest closing your windows if you live in the area. Reporting in Belmont, Gabriella Becerra, 12 News. All right, Gabby, thank you. A Scottsdale gym owner has been arrested and charged with sexually assaulting a female client. Police say that it happened at a house party in Paradise Valley back in April. 12 News journalist Bianca Bono is live outside of the Paradise Valley Police Department. And Bianca, what are you learning tonight? Well, Caribe, the alleged victim reported the assault to police hours after she said it happened, and police have been investigating ever since. And now we're learning this is not the first time this same suspect has been accused of sexual assault. Sexual assault, a class two felony. Tevin Favor, the 32 year old owner of Scottsdale Gym, better late than never, charged with sexually assaulting a woman he was personally training, according to a detailed 10 page probable cause statement, which lays out the Paradise Valley Police Department's investigation. It happened at a party in April, claimed by Favor to be the Paradise Valley home of NFL star Odell Beckham Jr. Police say Favor invited the 20 year old woman to the party and 
she went with her friend. Officials say Favor gave her multiple alcoholic beverages and touched her inappropriately at the party. She told him to stop, then remembers waking up in a room at the party as she said Favor sexually assaulted her. She texted a friend for help, and hours after leaving, she went to the hospital where she received an exam. Meantime, police say phone records show Favor continued to text and call other young women that night, urging them to come to the party or asking if he could go to their homes. Days later, Favor alerted gym clients, not including the alleged victim, that he was closing his gym immediately. Can you tell me your name? Tevin Favor. Police say this is not the first time Favor has been accused of inappropriate sexual contact, including sexual assault, listing four other cases. In a 2018 case, Favor was charged with sexual assault and went to trial, the state alleging a long list of aggravating factors, including a need to protect future victims from Favor. A jury found him not guilty. Now he's being held on a $150,000 secured appearance bond, facing sexual Sexual assault charges once again. Bianca, looking at the history that investigators have laid out against Favor, what happened in all those other cases? Jonathan, the only case that we could find in which Favor was found guilty of was a 2012 case out of Tempe where he punched a man. Regarding the sexual assault case from 2018, a jury did acquit him, and in the others, the women told police they did not desire prosecution. We should note we have made multiple attempts to reach Favor for comment. I also reached out to a lawyer who represented him in a previous case. So far, I have not heard back. Guys, back to you. All right, Bianca, thank you. Now to our ongoing coverage of Arizona's fake elector scheme with another defendant entering a plea today. Republican State Senator Jake Hoffman of Queen Creek entered a not guilty plea to nine felony charges in the case. Hoffman entered his plea over the phone in Maricopa County Superior Court. Hoffman and 17 others are charged with attempting to overthrow overturn Democrat Joe Biden's 2020 election victory in Arizona in a scheme that falsely claimed Donald Trump won the state. Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, is scheduled to enter a plea on Friday. Now to decision 2024, thousands of folks braving the extreme heat to hear former President Donald Trump speak in North Phoenix today. It was Trump's first public campaign appearance since being convicted just last week on 34 felony charges connected to a hush money scheme. 12 News journalist Chase Golightly was there and has a recap of what the former president had to say. But I'm thrilled to be back in beautiful Arizona. For the first time in nearly two years, former President Donald Trump spoke to a massive crowd here in the Valley. A few thousand people willing to wait in the hot Arizona sun outside Dream City Church in North Phoenix hoping Trump would address issues important to them. How are we going to move forward from where we are today? The border crisis, obviously. Just to lower taxes in general. Topics we heard most from his supporters, and Trump made sure to address them, starting with what he would do with Arizona's border if reelected. Well, and starting on day one, I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement, including parts of the DEA, ATF, FBI, and DHS, if you know what that all is. He also talked about rising inflation and cost of living, believing part of the problem centers around energy costs. We're going to lower your energy costs by 50 percent within one year. We're going to drill, baby, drill. After speaking for more than an hour, the former president then answered about a dozen questions from the members of the audience. Again, the majority of them centered around the border and the economy. I'm a mom of three. And when I go to the grocery store to fill up the fridge, costs are out of control. Trump once again says what focusing on fossil fuels is key. Energy is going to bring it all down. If we cut your energy in half, you're going to be you're going to see a difference, the likes of which you've never seen before. He then ended his remarks with thanking the audience, knowing what his supporters want to see accomplished. Because they all concern the economy, inflation and the border, and we're going to take care of it all. We're going to make America greater than ever before. In Phoenix, Chase Golightly, 12 News. Chase, thanks. As we mentioned, today's extreme temperatures did cause some folks in attendance to seek medical help. Our crews saw several folks being removed on stretchers and given IVs. The Phoenix Fire Department telling 12 News 11 people in total taken to the hospital because of the heat.